Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Doug passed along to me a story that's disturbing on the issue of electric cars. I admit I am not an expert on electric cars, and I do believe they're coming. I do believe that electric cars will eventually dominate the roads. It might be a while, but you never know. And, and Tesla is certainly making huge inroads in America. Uh, and it's impressive how they're doing that. So I, I, you know, I have nothing against electric cars. But anytime there's new technology, number one, you have fear of it, which is sometimes unfounded. But two, there's often things that pop up that people hadn't anticipated. And this might be one of them. Now, the story's out of New Zealand, but it's curious. A Nissan Leaf owner with range anxiety was told a new battery for her $13,000 car would cost $121,000. Now, Gil Higgins wrote the story for Fairgo, and apparently that's a TV show that runs on tvnz.co.nz, which of course is New Zealand. And we love our Kiwi friends, by the way. They call people from New Zealand Kiwis as a moniker, as we call it. So we have to do some translation here because New Zealand dollars are a little bit less than U.S. dollars. The translation, for instance, for a $13,000 car in New Zealand in the U.S. be $8,800. So this is an $8,000 car. And the woman had range anxiety because the battery on her car started to go. So she went shopping for a new battery, and she was told that the new battery would cost $121K, which translated into U.S. dollars is $82,000. And this is a problem because... One thing about the typical car on the road today that's a gasoline engine is that most of the parts are widely available such that you can buy them from the manufacturer or there's aftermarket companies that sell them. And so if I need a new alternator for my Ford Explorer, I don't worry about how much it's going to cost. I can get them from the Ford dealer. I can go to any auto parts store and buy one. They've got them on the shelf right now and they ain't that expensive. So Zoe Alford, bought her used 2011 Nissan Leaf, and she was happy with it. She paid, like I said, in U.S. dollars, about 8800 bucks for it, had low mileage, and was in pristine condition as far as she could see. She's looking forward to driving that car silently and not having to pay for gasoline. Within months, however, she began to worry. When she first got the car, she charged it overnight, and in the morning, it would show a range of about 115 kilometers. About 115 kilometers. That's the range, of course, how far the car would travel theoretically before needing a charge again. And I understand there's things that will factor into that, but at least that's the number we're using as a baseline. After a few months, the range began to drop. And so it dropped to around 70 kilometers, 70 kilometers. So that made her worry. Don't want to drive someplace and run out of electricity. (laughs) She said it was a constant nagging that the car might run out of power for getting where she needed to go. And her biggest worry was that it would get to the stage where I'll only be able to go down to the shops and back before having to recharge it, which is, of course, ridiculous. But she loves the car, just the one part about it. So she thought maybe it's time for a new battery. She contacted her local Nissan dealer, and they told her, and this is the quote, they quoted me $121,000 for a replacement battery from Japan. That's what she told TV NZ1's Fergo. Reeling from this ridiculous amount... She called Nissan New Zealand, and they said they'd look into it, but never got back to her. So she looked at secondhand, you know, i.e. used replacement batteries, and these were more reasonable, but they were sometimes as much as $14,000, which is 1000 more New Zealand than she paid for her car. So she could go and buy another car for less than she could buy the used battery for, which she thought was strange. So... It was at this point that she contacted the TV station and said, what do you guys think? Because apparently they've tried to solve some consumer issues. So they called Nissan New Zealand and got a response. And the company said the quote of $121,000 for a new battery was an error. But they wouldn't say how the error occurred and they wouldn't say what the actual price should be. It was happy to go into detail about the extended battery warranty they now offer with brand new Nissan Leafs sold in New Zealand, but would take no responsibility for the several thousand secondhand cars imported from Japan. They added that battery problems relating to these cars were the sole responsibility of the vehicle importer. So they're saying, look, it's not us. You got to go talk to the importer. So the TV station didn't like that response. Uh, They also contacted a guy named Bill Alexander, who works at Blue Cars in New Zealand. 
and they specialize in electric vehicles. He said, it isn't an acceptable answer. I think Nissan Japan is dodging a bit of a biggie with that. In his opinion, Nissan Japan and Nissan New Zealand should be cooperating to develop a way to provide cost-effective replacement batteries, without which thousands of cars could end up on New Zealand's scrap heap when the only thing wrong with them is the battery. Now, the problem is something that Blue Cars is working on. They've developed a prototype replacement using old car batteries and replacing cells to extend battery life. They're close to launching one that could give secondhand electric cars another 10 to 15 years of life, with each charge enabling driving distances of between 100 and 200 kilometers. But that will not be in time for Zoe, who's still trying to figure out what to do about her car. Now, they say that Zoe's anxiety raises the key point when it comes to electric cars, and that's that there's a huge dearth of information out there among consumers and dealers. And this is something I had never thought about. I've had people say to me, Steve, electric cars are all fine and dandy, but there's problems with the battery. And people often talk about the batteries and how expensive they are to produce and how much environmental harm there is in producing the battery, which I, I understand that. I know that. But I would never stopped to look into how much it costs to get replacement batteries. And of course, you know, in your typical gasoline-powered car, the engine, I guess, would be the big thing. And so you know that if you replace the engine in your car, it's going to cost you some money, but it can be done. It can be done. And you go to a junkyard and pull an engine out of a car. You can go to places that sell rebuilt engines. You can go to a dealership and get one that's done by the manufacturer, at least with their seal of approval. But the point is, it can be done. So I think a lot of people just assumed, well, they're selling these cars to the public. Replacement parts must be available, right? Batteries being the key replacement part in this particular situation. So while everyone likes a car with low mileage, this isn't the most important thing when going electric. That is the mileage on the car. Uh, Bill Alexander, who is from Blue Cars in New Zealand, says it's imperative that buyers are provided with information on the battery's state of health. This is a measure of how much power is left in the battery compared with its original capacity. Zoe was not given this information. Her anxiety was based on the range she could see. Bill Alexander says an electric car's range is known in the trade as a gasometer. <laughs> he explains it's affected by quite a number of different things, such as how the car is being driven the day before and even cold weather. Add to that whether the air conditioner is being used, and if you drive on hilly roads, you can see why it's not that reliable as an indicator for battery life. It's also not a very good indicator for battery distance, you know? So Blue Car says the way electric cars are sold in New Zealand needs to change. Every dealer should provide the battery state of health. Blue Cars goes one step further. They give a warranty for the main battery stating that if it loses more than 5% capacity within the first 12 months or 10,000 kilometers, which it shouldn't, then this will trigger a refund to the customer at $200 per additional percentage point loss. Blue Cars would like to see this introduced across the country. But notice they're not buying the car back and they're not replacing the battery. It's giving you some money. The uh, dealer uh, TV station then contacted Zoe's car dealer. They had the data on state of health from the, when the car was imported. They just hadn't passed it along. And at that point, it was 69%. To know if Zoe's anxiety about a decrease in battery performance was founded, we had to find the current state of health. And this should be a simple procedure, but there is still abundance of ignorance among the motor vehicle trade and consumers. They took the car to a garage in Gisborne. The owners were extremely helpful, but could only provide an estimate. They then took the car to a local Nissan dealer who couldn't help either. Uh, finally, a company called Transport Solutions was able to give us a correct reading. It turns out all they needed was an OBD2 and an app. And uh, once they did that, the current state of health of the battery was 63%. So they then took those numbers back to Bill Alexander to see what he says. And he says, it's right where I'd expect it for the age of her car. She should be quite comfortable with that. But they're basically telling her, look, that's what you'd expect in a car that age, but it still doesn't solve her problem. So once she understood that range was just an estimate that could change, she felt more comfortable. She also gained tips for increasing the distance she could travel after each charge. And she's hoping that Blue Cars gets those replacement batteries into the stream of commerce sometime soon. So that, again, gets us back to the initial problem. And that is, let's suppose you buy a used electric car. You buy a used electric car. So there's brand new electric cars rolling off the assembly lines right now, being imported, being bought, being driven. Somewhere down the road, they sell those cars and they become part of the used car market. And you buy a used electric car. 
Now, it seems to me that you'd have fewer things to check on an electric car compared to a typical car, simply because they're simpler, right? But the batteries appear to be a big question mark. So again, and I know these numbers are from New Zealand, but the woman bought an $8,800 car. I'm using US dollars here. $8,800 car. She bought that car. When the battery she thought was going bad, she called the manufacturer who said, oh, a brand new battery will cost you $82,000. $82,000. And then when she priced used batteries, they told her $9,500. And again, they're quoting her price for a used battery that is more than she paid for the car. And so I know there's guys in the audience who like electric cars. There's guys in the audience who have electric cars and gals too. And so if you have an electric car and have done any research on this, I would urge you, I would implore you, I would ask you, please comment. I'd like to know if you bought a Tesla, for instance, if you bought a Tesla and needed to replace the battery, what's the cost of the battery and what's the cost of the work? Because I'm assuming it's not as simple as changing the battery in a typical car where you pop the hood, undo two bolts, take off the things, put in the new one, put the things back on, redo the two bolts and close the hood. It's got to be a little more complicated than that. I suspect it is. So please, if you have expertise in this, let me know. But I suspect that this might remain a problem for a while because there's one other thing that goes into this I haven't mentioned yet. And that is when somebody's building something as fast as they can sell them, whether it be Teslas or Ford Broncos or any vehicle that's being sold so fast that they just make them as fast as they can replacement parts for those vehicles that are not compatible with other vehicles out there are hard to come by for a while because they're not going to start making replacement parts and putting those in a different stream while they need them all to build cars. So I'm wondering if the companies that make car batteries for electrics in America are also selling the same batteries into the stream of commerce to be used as replacements or not. I don't know. I don't know. So if you know that, again, you can answer that below. But that is often one of the factors that plays into it as to why it's hard to get replacement parts for a brand new product or technology. So again, the story is out of New Zealand. I suspect there'll be some lost in translation. The Nissan Leaf owner with range anxiety was told a new battery for her $13,000 car would cost $121,000. Again, New Zealand dollars. Gil Higgins wrote it for a fair go reporter, uh, tvnz.co.nz. And Doug sends it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Sometimes you bend, sometimes you stand, sometimes you turn your back to the wind.